Hi, everybody. Welcome to the QB School. I am JT O'Sullivan. Today, Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes things in the Super Bowl. Fired up for this one. Let's get it going. Welcome to the QB School. <laughs> Before we dive into the video, a quick reminder about the quarterback school Patreon community and really more than a reminder, this is a little bit of a foreshadowing that over at the quarterback school Patreon community very soon ish, there will probably be an entire full game breakdown of this game from both sides of the ball. So if you're interested in even more detail, more nuance from this game, from both sides, you will love the quarterback school Patreon community. Hop over there, join, become a member, get even more quarterback school content. I certainly appreciate your support. The link is in the video description. As for this video. Let's get into it. Patrick Mahomes, let it wash over you, y'all. My goodness. First one right out the gate. We're going to move the launch point to the left. We're going to come back and throw the big corner post back across the field. I thought this was a bit of a prayer during the broadcast. I actually think it's a much better throw during the All-22. Now, 31 certainly gets lost. You know, if you could play the ball and catch, you'd probably be playing offense. Love moving the launch point. I thought they had... They, being the Chiefs, had 97 in a blender all day. And we'll kind of show it over the course of this game. But just watch 31, the DB on the right. He can't find the ball. He doesn't know where it is. I mean, it's right over his ear. This could easily be a play where he goes up and potentially picks that thing if he could catch. Instead, it hits him in the hands. Now, how do we get there? Why do I think it's a better play? Because when you watch the broadcast, just the ball, it looks like he's chucking it up into double coverage. Well, in reality, this is what I'm going to call cover two. So split field safety, right? So we're going to get these two safeties right here, down here, and up top. I'm going to say that they're supposed to be playing two because we get rolled up cloud corner, cloud corner. Now, the problem is, is we can say they're trying to get to two, but when you come out here, you go up, you lean to the corner, and then you have this post back here, and you boot towards it, there's all this space usually to come back here and throw it. Now, you have to have the arm talent to be able to do it. But what I love that the Chiefs do, and they inevitably seem to take every concept and just make it better, where now we're selling the over and coming back out. So you've got Kelsey here standing with his, his arms wide open. You've got the big play down the field. And how do we get there? Well, we get there because 31 right here, he's lost. So when Mahomes moves off the launch point, you can see 31 here turn his back. And he's almost like safety roboting. Roboting is a technique you often hear about the second level where these guys will get play faked and then they'll turn and try to hunt up an over route. You almost never see it. In fact, I would say you never want to see it from a safety type. That's all bad news. So I'm going to guess that Patrick sees 31 with his back turn and lets this thing rip. And the thing I want, you know, both teams fans to understand here is this type of throw, like the audacity to throw this right here. When is he going to throw it right there? 31 has his back turned. Okay. Here's the run. There's a decent chance that the ball's designed to go right here. He's got his hands up. Pretty good player. But the willingness in the arm talent to push this thing down the field and get this big play with what is a better look than I think the broadcast version showed with your back turned, letting that thing go. There's a lot of differences between Purdy and Mahomes and really Mahomes and anyone. But this ability to push it down the field, I thought was lacking from the other offense. There were a few opportunities to do it. Doesn't mean you're going to hit it. But again, if 31 could find the ball right there, that's a different play. That might be a turnover-worthy play. Instead, it's a huge chunk that probably should set up points if it wasn't for a turnover. So again, just kind of understanding how they get there. Because I thought it looked really rough on the TV version. Like, he's just chucking up a prayer. Now, that's not even talking about how he can morph his body to be able to create the torque to generate that throw. But again, watch 31. Huh? 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 What the? I mean, that's not the look we're going for. 
especially when you get the Super Bowl logo right on the ground underneath you. Good night. Massive play. Next one here, third nine. Another 15 being 15. Mahomes moving up in the pocket, buying time, extending to his right, getting outside the pocket, finding 84 over the middle of the field as he pulls what I'm going to call an 87. Okay, So lots of jargon there. What the hell does that mean? That means Patrick Mahomes' ability to manipulate the pocket, keep this thing alive, use his vision, his playmaking ability on third and nine, gets a big first down here when they are struggling to move the ball early in this game. Now, what does an 84 pull in an 87 mean? First of all, I love what the Chiefs do. I think they do it probably better than anybody in the league where they run these, what I'm used to calling like tailpipe stems. So they'll get right behind him. But a lot of teams will do this, but do it off straight stems. So you'll see it out a bunch sometimes where you'll see three people kind of go in the same direction like this and they come out like high school Harry flood concepts. But the, what I love what the Chiefs do is that they do it at an angle. They do it at this diagonal that makes life that much harder, whether you call it spray, burst releases, whatever. So they still get to the flood. They still get to that deep flag pylon. And then I'm going to guess right here that 84, the number two here, is supposed to come out into that sail area. But what ends up happening here, and when I say pulls an 87, is he's out leveraged. The defender is inside of him. So instead of running into that and contacting it, he just settles up. Boom. Well, the problem is, is he's got real 87 coming on the backside. So they're into the same space. But 84 doesn't quit on the play. That's probably one of the biggest differences for me with this perimeter unit versus the 49er perimeter unit. These guys never stop. They are always playing. They're always off schedule with Mahomes. And so he just buys enough time. And again, he pulls an 87, then he pulls another 87, just finding space. So watch that number two down here to the bottom. Diagonal release, out leverage, stop. Keep playing. Keep playing. Find that soft spot. You know 15 will find you. It's just such an awesome job. Just an outstanding job. And this kind of football is contagious. It really is. Buy time, up, up, up. Look, I mean, look at 15. He peaks back at 97. Right there. Whoop. Now his eyes go back downfield. Throw him back across your body. Third and nine. On the shield. Massive first down. So that's it for the first half highlights. <laughs> We're into the second half. It's third and 12. Interception. Rough throw. Probably the only, what I would say, bad play from 15. Now I'm not even going to pretend to tell you that I know who he's throwing to. I think either way, it's a bad throw. To 87, he sails it. To MVS down the field, it's a poor decision. So it can either be a physical mistake or a mental mistake. But you got to love, so a few things here. First of all, there's nobody better at getting to the top of this thing and manipulating this pocket vertically and almost staying on the run under control. So yeah, does it work out here? Hell no. Hey, we're up, probably a seven stop. Again, pretty good linebacker he's working on right there. He's able to get open late, kind of like uncover himself. So is this open? Yeah, it's open. On the backside, we got MBS running. What well, I'm going to call this post. Now, is he running full speed? You know, I would probably argue not. Is he open? Mm, probably not. Definitely not open late and kind of in between. And this ball is a bit of a tweener. So, I mean, you make the decision here where this ball goes, who's a two, who's who in the zoo. It doesn't really matter. We can just in, I kind of collectively acknowledge not 15's best play. You know, tip your hat a little bit to the 49ers. Fred Warner downfield running with Kelsey hip to hip. He gets a little bit of space right there. And again, I really don't know. I'm not even going to venture a guess on who that's to. He might have, Mahomes might have already talked about this play, and I'm just not that interested to go back and, Tell me who he thinks he's throwing it to. Well, you can see 87's there. We just sky mailed that thing. To 11, it could be picked by either guy, right? I just, I almost refuse to believe that he misses 87 that badly, though. Rough, rough play. Fortunate that the 49ers really couldn't take advantage of it. Whew. Tough start to the second half. Next one here, third and four. 
this is really the subtle play that I thought got Patrick Mahomes going. So I think maybe he could throw it to Rice up top, the new number two, the point on the bunch on the little stick route. He flushes out of there, but it's the finish to this run. Now, I don't know if the 49ers thought they were playing two-hand touch or what, but the ability here to hit 15 in space and not let him run through a tackle. Now, are we getting held on the left side? <laughs> now, that sure looks like a lot of jersey right there. Could easily be called a hold. That right there, though, this hit right here. I mean, you can't let him lower your shoulder and go run through you for a first down. I mean, that just can't happen. And that was really the beginning of the end. So could he have, if he would have hung up top, put it on Rice? Maybe. You know, I think he's got to go because he feels that little L from the left side. So go. And then this right here, this just kind of contagious energy to run through someone right on your sideline for a big first down. Because that could have been stopped. You're probably punting there. You know, a bunch of bad things could happen. Running the quarterback like that, big collision. You know, get away with a hold, lower your shoulder, run through someone, and now they got it rolling. Next one here, zone read versus man-to-man. -man. This is just spread triple, y'all. And the 49ers don't have an answer. I know it's easy to say, hey, uh, and I've already done it in this video, Bosa's in a blender. Well, unless you know the defensive run fit rules, there's no way to know who's wrong. I will tell you that who I think is wrong is schematically they were caught off guard. Because when there's a middle field post safety, and I feel like I say this a decent amount, maybe substantial amount for the Patreon community, this post safety means that if they're willing to run the quarterback, the offense has a plus one everywhere. Okay, because there's no one for the quarterback, especially when you're playing man-to-man. -man. Okay, so let's just quickly kind of go through what this looks like for spread triple. We are reading 97. This is just zone read. But it's not just zone read like 2005 Rich Rod. This is spread triple. So we've got <clears throat> excuse me, the dive, the quarterback run, and then we've got the pitch, which I think they run like spear or arrow screen here, usually with these guys blocking. So you've got this triple element of dive, quarterback, pitch. Well, in man-to-man, -man, there is no one there. So let's assume Bosa does the right thing. He's got the dive. He's got the back. We've got the pitch in the flat, and we've got man-to-man -man up here. So we've got man-to-man, man-to-man, man-to-man. So when Fred Warner goes to fit this run, there's this huge lane here. Guess who needs to make that tackle? The guy in punt return formation back here playing post safety. That's why you don't see this type of stuff at lower levels of football because you can run the quarterback anytime. And the Chiefs are great at doing this when this matters most. Big games, big moments, running 15. There's nobody there. I mean, it's not even close. And really, this is like a spread quadruple because it sure looks like Rice is running a route. So you've got this, this. Those are your routes. That Those are your pitch options. And you've got the dive. And you've got the quarterback. So, I mean, there's just, there's a vertical threat, a horizontal threat. And there's nobody for the quarterback in the run game. And it's first and 10. And they got you. 15, using his legs. Just a beautiful job. Just an, a masterful play call. And again, I don't think this is on Bosa 97. This is on the scheme. Who's supposed to have the quarterback? 31? He's got 83 man-to-man. -man. He's got to go. Look at that. <laughs> I mean, shoot, 33 still doesn't know where the hell the ball is. Bosa goes, makes a tackle on the other side. He's really got the dive. That is awesome. Great offense. So next one here. Touchdown, first post turnover, a little switch go up top. So we're going to talk through this a few different ways. It's a beautiful call. Uh, my favorite part is Kelsey pointing <laughs> to the switch seam before it's even a touchdown. I love stuff like that. 
Uh, I think this certainly puts, you know, 48 Greenlaw's replacement in a blender. You know, doesn't have the capacity to get up, take that thing away. We'll talk first through like what the offense is doing here, and then we'll talk about kind of try to make sense of what the defense is doing. So what is this play? In short, we're running switch. We're running all go with a switch release. So here's the seam. There comes the go, and they just switch this thing with a little swing. So five-person protection. Okay, in and of itself, doesn't look that complicated. The problem here is at snap, you know, is this split safety? Is this middle field open or closed? If it's closed, and this guy's running down to the flat, well, then this safety is on the far hash. The ball's on this hash. The safety's on the far hash. And he's never, first of all, it's pretty rare to run post safety like this. I think at high levels of football in the red area. Because of this, the post safety really doesn't take away the deep post because you never really throw a deep post. What they don't take away are glances and seams, especially when they're on the far hash. You know, maybe they're trying to split the difference of the outside eligibles, but he's not doing that either. So by alignment, they've got him if this is middle field closed. It's so bad coverage wise that I almost think it's a blown coverage on the back end and they're confused and he's playing split field coverage and he's playing, I'm rotating down to the flat closed. I mean, it's just, it almost looks like a blown coverage. It's so big. But again, for our point here, the switch release is important. I love the fact that Kelsey <laughs> literally is pointing and celebrating before they even score on this. And Mahomes can't get it out of his hands fast enough. Now, again, if it's supposed to be closed, so let's assume the safety is correct. The safety should get more a little bit more to the middle of the field. And then Greenlaw, if he's in, can get enough depth to be able to maybe make that throw a little bit tougher. I don't know. Either way, it's too easy. Mahomes does a great job seeing it. Again, scheming people open. There's no question when you watch this film and then you watch the 49er offense, the Chiefs were throwing to more open players. I mean, that is wide open in the red zone for a touchdown in the Super Bowl. So again, you know, are they locked in? Just watch the motion. Watch the different. You, we don't have to know the run fits. We don't have to know the front call to just watch what this little walk motion does with the displacement of the linebackers of the second level. So this is where they start and then watch where they finish. They, it's just not as clean. It's what happens when you get backup life going in there. Watch the linebacker adjustment. Kick over. And now I'm going to stay in the gap. Oh, shit. Oh, not good, Bob. Boop. Too easy. Next one here. We'll start getting 87 going here. We're going to get him on a sail. He's going to start up top as the open nub. We're going to move MVS across. He's going to run a post. So it ends up being like a little scissors. But 15 and 87 just on a special connection. It's a beautiful route. Again, poor 31. Getting spun around. Having a rough day coverage-wise. But this is outstanding scheme. It's great trust between 15 and 87. Because technically, it probably shouldn't be there leverage-wise. 87 just wins at the top of these routes. So I'll pause this thing post shift here. Because this thing, you know, again, it's hard to have a better coverage call. You've got a post safety back here, right? We're running our fast guy on the post. We're running our Hall of Famer on the sale route. So he's going to sell the post and then come out of this thing. Well, we've got outside leverage here on this guy. So essentially they're doubling him, right? They've got the post safety and outside leverage. The problem is this guy's just good. He can win at the top of these routes. So at the top of the thing, he just crosses technique and it's a wrap, right? Like, and this guy, guess what? He trusts him to do that. And he puts the ball where? Right on his face. So it's just, you know, this is what it looks like. Special connection. Watch 87. Watch Travis Kelsey here. Sell this thing and win at the top. So not the leverage. and Just that little knot. That subtle little lean right there, got him. Again, it's not bad coverage. He's right in his hip. It's just a better ball and a better route. It's a nice job bringing him down quickly. But, man, that is just beautiful offense. It's, it's as good as it gets connection-wise. I mean, look at the leverage on 31 and 87 on our left. You would never think you're going to win going out there. 
cross it the whole way, and the ball is where? Boop. Right on his chin. Awesome. Halftime, you dig the channel, and you haven't already, please like, subscribe, hit the bell, get the notifications. I really do appreciate you subscribing to the channel. It means a lot to me personally, so thank you for going over there and subscribing. Also, the Quarterback School Patreon community already talked about it. You know about it. Hop over there, join, get the full game breakdowns pretty soon. We also have Quarterback School courses. Now, these courses are the premium content available through the channel. These are deep, deep dives on my favorite football topics. We have a course on RPOs, tempos, pass protection. The best-selling course is how to beat every coverage. We even have an entire offensive system available for you, so hop over there and enroll. The link is in the video description. We also have a bunch of free resources linked in the video description as well. Check them all out. And then finally, make sure to follow me across social media platforms. I appreciate your support. As for this video, let's get back to it. Next one here, third and 10. Man, this one hurts. 49er defense-wise. This looks like a fire drill. Who the hell knows? They can't get lined up. Fred Warner's throwing his hands up. They're running two at Fred Warner, and that's just way, way too easy on a third and 10. There's no way that you can let 87 be this open. Just watch the defense. They can't get lined up. Who's who in the zoo? They don't get home. Patrick Mahomes doesn't need a lot of space. Just flicks that thing. 97 on him. And that's a big first down. So just watch the 49er defense here. So as they kind of sort through what the Kansas City does presents flank-wise, watch the movement that's happening here. Watch these guys all out of position. I mean... This can't be that the way that they want to line up for third down. Their exotic stuff, this is what they want it to look like, just to shift from two-by-two two to three-by-one. So when you say when teams prepare sometimes, and movement is a big thing in the league, right? You see all these teams, oh, what teams motion and shift more? When you're a coach or presenting or preparing to play an opponent, if you see this on film where you go from a simple two-by-two, two, and this is the Super Bowl, y'all, Two by two eligibles shift to three by one. So just an easy shift to three by one. Okay, there's a lot of different ways you can play this defensively. But if you're a defense on third down that you have to move like four people with one person on offense moving, you're going to see a lot of shifts in movement. Like that's just, we got to have a better adjustment. We can't be having to move four for their one. It just doesn't work like that. It, they can't get lined up. Huh? Huh? What? With the huh? And now we're running two at Fred Warner down the field. And really, you know, I don't think there's anything wrong with what Patrick Mahomes does here. This is certainly a nice, easy first down. But he's got multiple options deep down the field. And again, this guy is all world, but he can't do everything. You can't ask him to do this. You can't ask him to overcome defensive, you know, pre-snap alignment issues. Great base, great torque, you know, awesome. Awesome quarterbacking. And you can tell Fred Warner's pissed, right? Look at him come up. Damn. From the back here, again, just watch the movement. Way too many moving parts. Nobody gets home. Way too easy of a third and long throw. Next one, second and 10. We're going to work a little circus up top. Just an outside seven. Burst release corner. High low the corner. Versus split field safety. And that's just way too much space. It's a shocking amount of space for a simple three by one doubles concept that you see, you know, first day of mini camp install in the West Coast world. So three by one, what I'm calling circus route. So up, in, and you can flatten that thing off versus man. And they're running the same thing on both sides. This is usually a middle field read. Open, you can take it, closed, run the basic. So open, closed, and then they're just chipping. Running flats. I'm telling you, this is as simple of a West Coast concept as you'll see. And if you catch split field safety with a cloud corner, you just high low this guy. You're trying to throw. The, you want the throw down the field. It's second and 10. These guys should be feathering this, trying to make this really tough on the quarterback. Who should I cover? Not just charging up on the flat. There's way too much space on the back end. You know, it's... It's, it's one of those things for me when, when you watch this film, the secondaries in this game, I mean, it was night and day watching the sticky coverage from Kansas City versus this kind of coverage from the 49ers in the second half. Pass rush doesn't get home. Way too much space. Patrick Mahomes not going to miss that very often. Right on him. Perfect throw. 
Again, just a simple high-low. And they're even chipping on the way out. Watch the back. You're going to run through Bosa's ribs. That's way too easy. Next one here, third and two. You know, this is the end of the game. Fourth quarter, down by three. Two-minute drive, Super Bowl, third and two. Patrick Mahomes audibles to a little flat with guys blocking in the downfield. It's outstanding. It's a world-class quarterbacking. Watch him check this thing. Look at all the pressure. So he's checking to what he wants. Who knows who's blitzing here, right? They've got eight guys at the line of scrimmage. Looks like they're trying to block a punt. They're going to sneak the back across, and there it is. So you got a free runner right in his face. 33. Perfectly thrown ball. Now, coverage-wise on the back end, we definitely got some issues. Also, how about the fact that the center's taken two here? Pretty damn awesome. Pretty damn awesome. Third and two. So scheme-wise here, this is a man call. So you're essentially sliding this guy across. They're full-on blocking down here, MBS. At least Rice is trying to sell this like it's like he's going to set a pick, and we're running through here. This essentially triple screen, essentially like a version of mesh traffic, a lot of people call it, but we're trying to get the ball on a little pick to the back. There's nobody even covering him. I mean, look, look at MBS down here, the number one. He's just coming off blocking. He's stock blocking like a one-on-one -on -one camp drill. Way too easy. Just a beautiful... A beautiful, as good as it gets audible right here from 15, or check. Their process, his toolkit at the line of scrimmage, when I'm talking about toolkits at the line of scrimmage, this is third and two, two-minute drive, Super Bowl. This is the toolkit you want to see. Look at the communication. Talk to the back again. Hey, what do I have, dog? Wait, wait, what? what? You're throwing it to me? Wait, I have the flat? I have the slide? Yeah, 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 you, go. And then there's a free runner right in your face. Oh, yeah, nonchalant. Right on him. First down. Wow. Next one here, third and seven, 16 seconds left. Same Super Bowl two-minute drive. This is to get a chip shot field goal. Watch Kelsey at the bottom. His buddy Gray running the perfect mesh. And then we turn on the afterburners right there. Guy 87 is striding out. If I knew a Taylor Swift lyric, I would insert now. <laughs> That's beautiful. It's a beautiful call. It's a really, really nice route from 83. So what I want you to do here is pay attention to this. So if you were just watching this on a piece of paper, it would look like this mesh. Okay? But the reality here of how he runs this, he comes across, he sets the pick almost like a moving pick, doesn't touch anybody and go. Well, what that does to Fred Warner is it makes him hesitate just enough that now 87 can turn on the bur the burners and go get us one. So it's it's that route from Gray up top, the number three. Just let the detail, the, the ear must be here, the fucking nuance of a high-level drop-back game wash over you. Da, da, da. No pick. Doesn't hit him. Doesn't get a flag. That's a backup. Being locked the fuck in for a massive play to send this thing to overtime. And really give you a shot to win it at the end. It's just beautiful. This is awesome offense. Look at that little subtle. Da, da, da. And it just has the slightest impact on Warner. Watch Warner have to just kind of like, eh, right there. And it's a wrap. Running away from him. 87 is running away from 54. Friendly fire. Big chunk. Next one here. Fourth and one. The old Matt Nagy special here. A little naked right with a slide from Kelsey or sneak flat back across the other way. It's got man answers. It's got zone answers. And it's got Patrick Mahomes. I mean, there's no question on fourth and one whose hands you're putting it in. There's no way you're running the ball here. The 49ers are in cover two. Again, 97 in a blender on the right side. I think the broadcast, the TV version, I don't remember if they mentioned it or not, made it seem like this was an RPO. This is not an RPO. This is a straight up naked or keep. So what that means is we are selling out. This is elephants on parade to the left. We're trying to get the ball to Kelsey one. And they're really running almost like picks up here. 
Like this is like double snag. They're trying to almost get rubs to get Kelsey the ball. If it's man, it probably goes there. If it's zone, we don't have a lot of great answers. You maybe have the over. Maybe you can find one of these spots or snags in here. Otherwise, Mahomes is going to do it himself. Coming downhill. So one, maybe two, maybe two and a half, three, you've got to take it yourself. And that's exactly what he does. And again, 97 right here. Just seen so many different looks. He's hard charging this thing, fourth and one, trying to make a tackle. The other thing, just talking through defensive here, and it's not defensive school, but it's fourth and one. Y'all, they're playing cover two. Okay? Cover two in fourth and one. That's what 15 does to defenses. I mean, <laughs> pretty damn rare. I can't imagine that very many teams roll cover two on fourth and one very often. It's beautiful. It is beautiful. And if Matt Nagy designed it, he deserves all the credit with it. Love the call. Love 15 calling his own number. Again, nobody's blocking Bosa. If he comes up field there, we got to have answers. He doesn't. 15 using his legs. Really the difference in this game. There were some great plays from 15 all the way around, but his legs made this thing go. Next one here, third and six. Really nice play from Patrick Mahomes. Nice play call. Nice catch from Rice at the bottom as well. This time, third medium, they're going to heat you up. Kansas City is going to make it look easy. Overcome some ridiculous kind of backward completions. But Patrick Mahomes' ability to play off his back foot and be smooth and make the difficult look easy, I think can't be overstated. I really don't. So for me here, this is zero. Birds on a fence. Okay, we've got three by one. And now where this ball ends up going, down here to the bottom on the little shallow, it looks like it's paired with what I'm going to call that pylon or flag. Kelsey, I think, comes out. He probably has the sail or Seattle. He just does that Kelsey thing where he settles when he has outside leverage. And then the crazy thing about this play is coming across here on the kind of shallow cross, whether he's supposed to get a pick or not, they just drop him. So, I mean, yeah, it's a big play, and this is certainly the correct read. Nobody covers him. So, for, and the reason I think it's important is just we're getting exposed on the back end. The back end for the 49ers got overwhelmed as this game went on. And it was just one of those things where it's only a matter of time before you're going to make them pay. When you're popping guys this wide open, you got guys running free down here to the bottom. They can't sort out zero in a simple three-by-one with mesh or crossers. Nice little hit by block from Kelsey, and there it is. Just making really difficult. I mean, there, he, technically, he's hot to the left. Free runner. The other part that I think is worth mentioning, and I, I think it is pretty unique to Patrick Mahomes, he plays off his back foot so well. So what a lot of guys would need to take a hitch, he just puts his foot in the ground on five from gun on another kind of low snap. All his cleats in the ground, doesn't can't get through the throw, flips that back hip. I mean, that's not a perfect throw. That's a nice catch. <laughs> Pummer turn right. Next one here, third and one. Another awesome run from Patrick Mahomes. Nothing there. A little flat corner up top versus a cloud corner. Mahomes goes quickly, gets vertically, just fast enough. Whatever you want to do to describe how he runs. The decision to run here. So, go. Make somebody miss. Again, he's not running away from any random linebacker there. 54. Yo. Big chunk. Not sliding. Running through tackles again. I mean, it's just using his legs to be the difference. There's nothing there. You know, if you're a pocket guy, a pocket quarterback here, you're in trouble. You know, maybe you put it on rice. Reading this thing right to left, flat, corner, shallow, go. And then getting some, getting vertical, making a big play with your legs. Just so many different examples of him being the difference, being able to create like this. How many times have we seen it? My goodness. And then finally, the walk-off winner. Everybody kind of getting all excited about this kind of quote-unquote like corn dog motion, shuttle motion. This little Tom and Jerry play. What this is, is the Chiefs being the Chiefs. This is power shovel. 
and he just gets it to the pitch. Okay, so what I'm talking about here, power shovel, again, we are putting 97 in a blender. We are reading 97. So power shovel, same side power shovel. So for me, that means we're going to fake it to him, and then he's going to get back in, pay, in phase to run power. We are then going to have the pitch out here. So this play is fake. And then what does 97 do? Does 97 take the shovel away? Well, then we're going to be out on the edge, working one probably to run or maybe to Kelsey on the corner. So let me say that again. 97, we are reading. Blender. If he were to get with right here, we'd fake it to the back and then shovel it to the back. Power shovel. I mean, how many times have they run this to Kelsey? Think of Lamar and Patrick Mahomes is the best at this. So you shovel and you shuffle and read 97. If he bites hard inside, then we're going to be out on the edge, either running it ourselves, playing quarterback, or getting it to the pitch. And they add a little ketchup or mustard from Andy Reid with the corn dog motion. And that's the pitch. So let me say that again for all the people in the back. Reading 97. If he were to get up the field, we'd shovel it right here to the back. He doesn't get up the field. He comes this way. We can either run it ourselves, quarterback-wise, or we can throw it to the pitch. And again, you can see the deuce. Watch this deuce block right here on the three technique. They're trying to get this right here. That's the easy throw. It's awesome. 97, blender. Motion. Whoop. Again, look at that double team, right guard, right tackle. Deuce your ass into the end zone. And again, you can see the shovel coming back across. I would say, I would guess the left guard should probably keep going and not even get distracted by 97. They're not long trapping him. There. So that's the Tom and Jerry part. Okay. Tom, the shovel, Jerry, the pitch, probably. Walk off. Walk it off. <laughs> My goodness. I mean, look at Bosa. Just shot out of a cannon. Look at that get off. He makes it easy. It's barely a read. He's going. I love the deuce, though. Look at that double team, right guard, right tackle. I mean, you can see you've got an A gap cutback, a C gap cutback if you pitch it back to the back. That's awesome. Kelsey doesn't even look. He's celebrating. Boom. Before he's even in the end zone. Wow. So that is a wrap. Patrick Mahomes. My goodness. I mean, I thought Andy Reid did a really nice job post game talking about it. He just has this uncanny ability to make the difficult look easy. There's nothing easy about what Patrick Mahomes did on that film. He's what who he's out there competing with, what they're doing scheme wise, that defense that they had to go to in the, against in the Super Bowl, the defenses they had to go against all the way through the playoffs. 15, just doing 15 things, really. I think, and then you combine that with the in game adjustments, how they were able to kind of get the ball to 87 going, get creative enough, pop some guys open. I thought they really had a lot more space to throw the ball to than the 49ers did on the other side of the ball. And so all those things combined and really being able to overcome what was really a tough start. There was not a lot easy for the first, you know, half plus. You know, you go into the second half. Really rough turnover. 49ers can't capitalize on it. And now all of a sudden, you're hanging around. You're doing those Chiefs things that they've done all year. And it almost felt inevitable for 15 to find a way. And I just love the fact that he uses his legs. He creates. He's got the playmaker vibe. But he's also got all the answers. That third and two where he checks into the pressure beater with the back coming across. The fourth down naked. Just so many really nice locked in, precise, surgical play calls and outstanding execution. Football at its absolute highest form when it matters most. So much fun. Thank you so much for hanging to the end. I will see you next time. Have a good one.